Cat in the Hat here with another Dr. Seuss book. So here we go. Today we're going to be reading The Lorex. Ooh, he's my friend. I think he has to do something with these trees. Hmm, let's see. At the far ed end of town where the ginkgo grass grew, the wind smelt smells slow and sour when it blows, so no bird ever sings except old crows, in, is the street of the lifted lorax. And deep in the, in the grickle grass, some, some people say, if you, deep, if you look deep enough, you will still see today where the lorax once stood, just as long as it could before somebody lifted the lorax away. What, what what was the Lorex and why was he there and why was he lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the ginkgo, grinkle grass grows, the old onceler once lived here. Ask him. He knows. Let's ask the onceler. You won't see the onceler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his linkersham, linkum at top of on top of his store he lurks in his linker cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of miffer muff moof and on special dark midnights in august he peeks out his out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells you how the lorax was lifted away he'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay on the end of the rope he lets down a tin pail and and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and he shall he shall of great 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 grandfather snail did you bring the money then he pulls out the pail marks and makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount then he hides it he hides what you paid him away in his snuffle in his snoop his secret strain his secret strange hole in his givelo glove. Then he grunts, I will call you, I will call you by whisper, Puffon, for the secrets I tell you, your ears alone. Slop down, sl slop down, slops the whipper, whipper, muff, whipper, Puffon to your ear, and the old onceler whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a sniggerly hose and he sounds as if he had small uh, smellish bees up his nose now i'll tell you he says with his teeth sounding gray how the lorax got lifted and taken away it all started way back a long long time back Way back in the day when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the, the, sweep, the swim swans rang in, the, in peace, in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and first saw the trees, the trefula trees, in bright colored tufts of the trefula trees, mile after mile of fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown baba boot, baba balut, frisking about in their baba love suits. They're playing as they played in their shade of the truffula fruits. From the, from the ripsis pond, from the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch, of, the touch of these tufts was much softer than silk, and they've had the sweetest smell of fresh, bu of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leap of joy in my heart. I knew what I'd do. I'd unload my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop, and with a great skillful skill of skill, and with great Speedy speed, I took that soft tuft and knitted a fneed. Then, the instant I finished, I heard gall flump, 
I looked up and saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and, and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdust sneeze, I'm the Lorex, and I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees of the trees you have, for the trees have no tongues, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed, What's that thing you've made out of my truffula truft? Look, Lorex, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree, and I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a sneed. A sneed, a sneed is a fine, find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, and all other uses far beyond that. You can use it for carpet, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, or bicycle seats. A lorex said, the lorex said, sir, you are crazy with greed that no one on earth would buy that fool sneed. The voice, but the very next minute, I proved him wrong. For just that minute, a cheap, a sharp, a chap came along, and he thought that the sneed I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the lorex. You poor stupid guy, you never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the lorex. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed Chris across the room. In no time at all, built a radio phone. I put a put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at the Weak, weak, weak him sharp right at South Snitch. And in no time at all, the factory I built, the whole Wunstler family, was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeds, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of trefula trees. Then, oh baby, then, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffula trees in at one smacker. We were making sneeze four times as fast as before, and the lorex, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the lorex who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But also I'm charging, I'm in charge of brown babaloots, of the brown babaloots who played in the shade of the barb barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to you and your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruits to go round. And my poor barbaloots are all getting the, getting the crumbsies because they have, they have gas and no foods in their tummies. Oh no. They love living here, but I, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food and hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and I sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad, but I watched as I watched them all go. But business is business, business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies um, in tummies you know. I meant no harm, I, I most tr truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. The bigger my factory, the bigger my roads, the bigger my wagons, the bigger my loads. A sneeze I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on bi bigging, biggering, selling more sneeds, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nonsense Lorax came back with more gripes. I'm the Lorax, he griped. He coughed and, and whiffled. He sneezed and he snuffed and he snarled. He sniffed 
Oh, once like he cried with a crumpless crook. Once like you're making such a smuggler smoke. My poor swamy swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in their throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have a fly. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. One, what's more, slapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about, gl about glippity glup. Your machinery clogs, clogs on day and night without stop and making glippery glup your, your schloppity schlop. And what do I do with the leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old onceler man, you. You're glooming the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all grummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their furniture. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then, then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap and say bad, bad, bad. Well, I have my rights, sir. I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just as I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm frigging and begging and big, I'm biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering the more truffula trees into sneeze, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack from outside the fields came a sickening smack. An axe of the tree, then I heard the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. Oh no. No more trees, no more sneeds, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, every one, all waved me goodbye. They jumped in my cars and drove under, away under the smoke smuggering stars. Now all that was left beneath the bad smelling skies was in my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad backwards glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants and, and I'll never forget the grim look in his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that Lorax left here in the mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. When, whatever that means, whatever that meant, well, I'll just couldn't guess. But, but was long, long ago, each, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while my buildings have fallen apart. I've worried about I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the one slur, I'm now that you've you're here, the words of the Lorax seem perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So catch, calls the one slur. He lets something fall. It's the truffula seeds. It's the last ones of all. You're in charge of the last truffula seeds, and truffula seeds aren't ev are what every truffula trees are what everyone needs. Now a new truffula tree, plant a new truffula tree, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow in the forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then, then when the Lorax and all of his, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. <gasps> the end. Thanks for reading The Lorax with me, friends. We'll see you next time. Bye.